Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're gonna be diving into the timeline. Now, the timeline is where you're gonna be spending a lot of time animating between artboards. And in this case, we're gonna be showing you what you can do exactly within that timeline and sort of how it all works. So let's get going right now. So as we've seen here, We've built some pretty standard, pretty normal animations. In this particular one, I just have a gray rectangle that's the defaults growing and shrinking like this. Now, we've talked about a lot of things, but there are still a ton of key features in principle that we haven't gone over. For instance, the animation timeline. So if we select any of these arrows, right, from our interactions, from artboard to artboard, you'll notice that we have this view down here. Let's go ahead and just bring this up a bunch so that it's way easier to see. So what this is, is if you've ever used another application, uh, video editing or anything like that, you would have had a timeline with keyframes. If you've ever used After Effects, it's very similar. You could think of it as like Photoshop over time, right? Or, or sketch over time. Here we have a value for a particular dimension and over here we have the end value. So in this particular animation, if you select the initial rectangle, we're taking this width, as you see, as a value of 44 to a value of 320. And so in that regard, this initial diamond right here is the 44, and then this diamond is the 320. Now you'll notice if we click and drag this, we can extend the time. The default here looks like it's about a third of a second or so. And as we drag, you can see the value getting larger and larger. So 0 0.86, now one becomes one second. Now what's interesting here is we just moved the width we have the width that's now going from the same value it was, so this didn't change any of the values, it's just going to take more time. So what we have here is essentially this timeline where we can tweak any of the individual animated properties over time. So now let's go ahead and what you'll notice is that when we click this, the Y gets really big, but the width takes much longer. So you'll notice we get a skinny and then it grows out from there. Now another thing to notice is that the X value is now being animated. Because the width is taking so much longer, the X value sort of pulls away from the side here. So it's a way we can prevent that from happening. Well, one thing we can do is, let's go ahead and just click this symbol next to the X. And what you'll notice is that the X value is now frozen. Now this is kind of a problem because when we do our animation, you'll notice it doesn't actually end up correctly, right? Look at that, it's, it's sort of weird here. What's happening is the X value isn't animating at all, although because of the style of this animation, it's not pushing out to the right the same way it needs to be. Let's go ahead and unclick this frozen and let's drag this all the way to zero. Let's check this out. So now you'll notice we have this really shocking jump. It jumps to the center and then grows out. Again, that's not exactly what we're looking for. What happens if we set this to one or one second, the exact same as the width? Let's go ahead and try this out. Now you'll notice we get something really nice here. So let's do this again. What's gonna happen is it grows vertically and then goes out to the right. So what we're able to do is successfully tweak individual properties over time. In addition, you may have noticed from this diamond here, you may have noticed this word default. Now the default is the easing. So you can see we have easing patterns that we can drag these curves to and we can modify the easing patterns from default to custom easing patterns. Now the easing patterns can change a whole lot of how the animation actually takes place, but I'm gonna be covering that in the next video. So don't worry too much if you've never experienced or experimented with easing. 
So as you can see here, we now have access to individual things in the timeline and we can modify any of them. For instance, if we were to select this initial square and change the fill to red, you'll now notice what we have as a new option for the red layer to animate. Let's say we want the red layer to take two seconds to animate. Now let's go ahead and click this. You'll notice that it changes over two seconds. So any individual property that is animated, we have access to right down here as we change it. Now, if you want to select another animation, all you have to do is click on the arrow. I would click on the title of the arrow. It's going to be easier to manage. But as you can see here, just because one animation one way has set up an animation, uh, when we select this other animation over here, we no longer have the same type of values, our X, our Y, our width, they're all at the same value. Now, if we wanted to modify a bunch of these at once, you can click and drag in this space here and select a whole bunch of keyframes here. And let's move this entire animation to 0.7 seconds. So as you can see here, to modify a whole bunch or move the entire animation, you're going to need to select all of your keyframes. So whenever we create a new interaction, we have access to the animations in the animation timeline where we can go ahead and tweak the timing, the easing, we can freeze, we can do a whole bunch of stuff. But either way, we have complete access to make this animation go as quickly or as slowly as you'd like. For instance, I know we drew this out, but let's go ahead and make this animation really tight. Now, let's do it like, uh, point 0.1 second. So as you can see, it's very obvious this takes two seconds and that takes no time. I mean, it, it's, it's a very different effect that you're going to get. And this is something that you're going to want to play around with a lot in real life interactions on the web or in mobile, you want these animations to take place in a way that feels natural, but is also not too long or arduous for your users. So a lot of it is going to be experimenting and feeling it out and potentially having some people get in there and try it and just see how it feels. But either way, having access to this timeline gives you complete control over your interaction animations. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorial. And if you want to get access to a bunch of videos that aren't going to be released on YouTube, that'll show you how to recreate some really popular uh, principal files then you can purchase this series at store.leveluptutorials.com or become a Level Up Pro and get instant access. As always, this is Scott. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.